In this video, we're going to take a look at assembly and management techniques inside of Autodesk Inventor. Here I have a loader assemble manage IAM from our working files directory. And this is a completed design that has all of my IPTs put together. They've been assembled using assembly constraints, which basically hold our parts together. So we can define how these things will come together in the overall arrangement by use of geometric rules and conditions we apply to our model. And what that allows me to do is come in here and pull on something such as this wheel and have it spin without having it come loose of the axle. Now our geometric relationships we have in here all get stored in a folder at the top left here inside of an assembly. You can see all these different types of relationships I have, a lot of insert relationships, angle relationships, things of that nature. Here I'll just redact that. And we'll also take a look at how to look for issues where we might have overlapping parts, such as an interference. If this was a two-dimensional CAD system, the process of looking for interferences or things that overlap each other is a very tedious process, and you have to stare at a lot of different lines to figure out if something is actually indeed overlapping. Here inside of Autodesk Inventor, it's a lot easier. So we can go up to our Inspect tab, and we can click on this command called Analyze Interference, and we can define our set by clicking on them or creating a window around the parts we want to analyze. Here I'll choose OK, and it's going to tell me I have these different interferences going on. Now, some interferences are good, some interferences are bad. If we have an interference of a press fit dowel or a screw thread interaction, that's OK. We expect that. However, if we have an interference where two blocks are blatantly overlapping each other, that can be a serious problem. So here, if I were to zoom in, you can see I have some threaded engagements going on. I have some rings right here. This is actually from a rubber piece that's getting compressed. So I'm OK with that sort of interference going on there. Now, if I come down here, I have a little bit of interference with this plastic nut screw going into the tire. So maybe this needs to be backed up a little bit. That's a small interference. I probably don't care too much about it, but at least I know that it exists. If I had blocks overlapping each other, it would definitely stand out and I would have to go in here and change how things are put together. Let me choose OK to close that. And these interferences don't stick around forever. When you start to scroll your mouse wheel after exiting the command, they do go away. Now, something else to look at in here is range of motion. So let's say this bucket here, I don't want to have it always raised at 45 degrees. I would like to have it come down a little bit or actually go up higher, perhaps. I just want to check that range of motion to make sure it makes sense. Now, you can probably look at this model and say it's going to be OK. But let's just take an example here. If I scroll down to the long slot runner 1, I have an angle of negative 45 degrees maintaining a geometric hold to keep that bucket raised at 45 degrees. So if I come in here and try to pull on this, it's not going to come down. It's being held there. If I change this angle value from negative 45 to 0 by simply changing it in the bottom there when it's selected and hitting Enter, it's going to update that geometric relationship to have that drop the bucket down. Now I can also have that be negative 90, and that's going to go straight up, or turn it back to the 0 value. Now if I want to see a visual change of that motion, what I can do is right click on the angle 9 here and choose the option called drive. This will take my constraint and drive it from one value to another. So I'm going to start here at a 0 value and end at negative 90 and basically just play this in reverse direction because I'm going in the negative direction or the positive direction depending on which way you're going. And you can see that range of motion taking place. I can record this out to a video, put this into a PowerPoint, put it on a website take it to a meeting, do lots of different things to allow me to show the range of motion to different third parties. Here I'll choose cancel it to get out of there. And the next thing to take a look at is how we can export all of our data about this file. When you build a design, you might have procurement systems, you might have people that need to do purchasing on this, you might have to export a bill of material for sales or for the shop floor or just a general bill of sale. So what I'm going to do next is take a look at our build material command, which is on our assemble tab. And I'll choose the build material command from the manage panel. And this will open up a window that shows me all the different types of elements that make up this design. So here we have our model data tab. And this shows me the part number, a thumbnail for it, the build material structure, unit quantity, stock number, and description, and revision. 
I can also include or exclude different columns to have different types of data reporting into my build material. Now I also have some different tabs in here. So we'll spend a whole video session talking about build material, but one of the most important things to understand about this is you can export your build material here to different text files, Excel files, access database files, whatever you might need to get this out of Inventor and into a different software package for those reasons I mentioned. Now you can also make changes to your data here as well. So for instance, if I think this stock number needs to be something different, you can see it highlights. And I say, well, you know what? The stock number is actually something else. Or if I wanna fill out the description here, I can do that. And it will save that information back down to this original file. So I don't have to go back to the file explicitly and do it. I can do it all right here through assembly management. I'll go ahead and close this build material command. And this has been a look at some of the assembly and management tools we have inside of Autodesk Inventor to better understand what we're gonna have available to us.